think it's half past, so we should start. Um, welcome, everybody, on uh, my session for Project Update Bot, Redwood Group 11. Uh, my name is uh, Björn Brala. I'm CTO at Swiss. Uh, I'm core maintainer for JSON API and a maintainer for Project Update Bot, and also a board member for the Dutch Drupal Association. If you ever want to find me or contact me, just uh, find me on Slack. I'm pretty addicted to that, or Twitter, or Drupal.org. Swiss is a Dutch digital agency from Leiden, the Netherlands, and we do sustainable digital transformations. We mostly do that for nonprofit, government, and uh, healthcare organizations, and we really love our automated updates. We tend to update to new versions uh, our sites in about a day, and we love to bring that power to Drupal also. So, Project Update Bot. It's a good bot? Yeah, it's a good bot. So, uh, if we look at uh, how we're doing right now, um, a lot of the mod top 1,000 modules uh, are ready for Drupal 10, about 84%, which is great. The update bot uh, posted about uh, 7,200 issues on the issue queue, and uh, well, almost uh, more than 2,000 have been fixed or close as fixed, and there's about 500 who are RTBC, so we're doing pretty great. If you look at uh, that compared to Drupal 9, you'll see that we started quite a lot earlier than we did in the 8 to 9 release cycle, <coughs> which is a good thing but it is still only was about six months before the release of Drupal 10, which is a little bit short. So I talk about uh, the project update bot, but what is this guy with uh, like 4,500 issue credits? Uh, unfortunately, his profile uh, gets a 500 error if it's too busy on Drupal.org because it has so many credits on so many different issues. So project update bot, is the face of project analysis, and it's mostly a collection of powerful tools to help modules upgrade to the next major version of Drupal. Uh, we have uh, PHP Stan, we have uh, Rector uh, combined with uh, upgrade status, and a few projects around that. Project analysis, that is the glue of it all, the update bot, which is the face, and a deprecation sta uh, dashboard to help people understand how we are doing in our upgrade path. So some short info on the different tools we use. For one, there's PHP STAN, which stands for PHP Static Analysis Tool, and it finds bugs in your code without writing tests. That's not something I rec would recommend, but uh, that's at least what they promise. What it does, it analyzes your code and uh, reports on things like uh, wrong function arguments or wrong types of variables or the usage of deprecated code. Uh, PHP Stand Drupal is an extension that helps PHP Stand integrate with Drupal better. If you anyone, and at any time want to use it yourself, I would advise to use Drupal Check, which does a lot of configuration for, your, for you and uh, enables you to use a uh, uh, PHP stain and your projects pretty easily. Another tool that's used is Upgrade Status, which is a module that uh, tells you about the status of your Drupal installation regarding the next major version. Uh, it tells you things like how is your platform doing, where you're running on, and how are your modules doing in regards to the next major version. It also tells you helpful things like where can I find uh, possible patches or is there a Drupal 10 release for your modules available. The next tool is uh, Rector. Rector promises to turn legacy code into valuable and sustainable code. Uh, basically what it does, it's a way to use code to refactor code. So for example, uh, in build, it has stuff to uh, support new versions of PHP. So you might need to upgrade from PHP 7 to 8. For some reason, it can help you with that. But it can also refactor classes or method or functions to new signatures and help you in that way. And that's 
the core of what we do with Project uh, Updates Box. To give you a little example, um, this is a configuration for, uh, for Rector, which tells it to uh, add an argument to a class. So if you run this through Rector, you, it searches your code, it searches for classes that might extend the base class, adds the argument, and uh, in everywhere where the method is used, it uses that argument also. So that's a really handy way to create new maintainable code from the code you use. In order to have it work with Drupal, we have uh, Drupal Rector, which is mostly a set of deprecations that uh, uh, can be fixable with Rector. So if new deprecations come out, there's a, there's a configuration written for, for Rector and uh, post it there, and from then on, it's possible to refactor your code there. So basically, Project Update Bot is the face of project analysis. It uses uh, loads of tools, uh, combines them towards uh, helping module maintainers uh, get their modules ready for the next version of, uh, of Drupal. So by their powers combined, I am Project Update Bot. Behind Project Update Bot, there's Project Analysis. And uh, project analysis automates the data collection and the patch generation for, uh, for all the modules. Uh, and that's quite useful. Automation is important because Drupal really needs its modules. Um, especially if you look at, at site builders, they need modules to extend the functionality of Drupal and make sure that it's usable for them without, to have, without having to write too much code. Also, a lot of the modules are pretty laser focused, are small and do a small amount of things. This means upgrading them to new versions of Drupal is quite easy, it's not a lot of work. Um, but we want to make that work even less and make sure and uh, keep the maintainers dialed in into the new versions of Drupal. So in a nutshell, project analysis is just a set of scripts. So a script to install and check and patch modules. It, it, it analyzes all Drupal.org projects that are uh, compatible with the last version of, uh, last major version of uh, Drupal, uh, creates patches from the updated code and stores the analysis results for usage in other tools. And nowadays it runs on GitLab runners, which is fun. Um, last year, it was migrated from the, the infrastructure of uh, the Drupal Association using Jenkins to GitLab Runners. Um, this, it runs for about three hours nowadays. When we started, it was more like five or six. So things got less heavy, but there's also less to do because uh, a lot of modules are ready for those 10. What it does, it processes about 10,000 projects. Might be a little bit less right now and it splits it uh, to 50 separate jobs and does it as parallel as allowed. This did mean that uh, I did break uh, git.drupal.org a few times uh, when developing this, so I'm sorry if you couldn't just check out core at some point. There are three steps in that process. We prepare, we analyze, and we publish. Let's look a little bit in how Project analysis does, does that. It starts by just installing and enabling a project, yeah, a module. Then it runs uh, upgrade status to check for deprecations in that module and saves the XML output. That output is something like, like this, which is uh, in this file there's a deprecation we need to fix and uh, other than that, your uh, info.jamo doesn't require the correct core uh, version. So it then decides, do we need to run Rector or not? Is there deprecation we might be able to fix if we run Rector on this code? Um, in this case, yes. So if so, commit the project as it is right now, so we know the current state of the module as is, run Rector and fix the deprecations, and store the output of that process. 
The fun thing, because we commit, is that we can just use Git to know if there's changes to the project, if there's any deprecations fixed. So if there's changes, we run upgrade status again and see if the output is clean. So this could be a diff of uh, such output. It uh, shows that the line where um, deprecated uh, method was called is now gone. So we're happy and we think, yeah, this is fine. We only need some uh, core version requirements changed. So let's create a patch and uh, be happy about it. And it does that again and again and again and again for every single project that it knows to upgrade. All these patches need to go somewhere. So we need to store those, we store those as artifacts in GitLab. Um, this means they are downloadable pretty easily at the jobs that are run there. But there's also a job to combine all uh, artifacts into a single directory, so you can download everything if you like. You don't have to go through 50 jobs <laughs> to find the module you are interested in. And they're also committed to an orphan branch, a results branch. So we have a Git history of all the patches that have been made and committed over in, during the time of the project analysis. And that's great, because that's a really good way to, for example, debug how things are going or why a module stopped being Drupal 10 com compatible all of a sudden. And uh, a lot of times you see that a module might have committed some old code or something like that. But sometimes there's bugs. So now we have data. And data is cool. We all know of data. But um, data is only as, it only gets valuable when it's turned to the, into information. So that data in project analysis is, for example, used in the uh, deprecation status dashboard, uh, which is maintained uh, mostly by uh, Gabor, uh, which gives a lot of statistics on how uh, we are doing right now and how many modules are ready for Drupal, for Drupal 10. It's a pretty green <laughs> blob right now, so that's a good thing. Um, if you ever go there and you're interested also in how your modules are doing, it's also possible to get lists of the modules you maintain or someone else maintains and drill down into even the module itself and all the messages that are, uh, are, are given by the analysis tools. So you have an interface to find out how you are doing without doing it yourself, and that's great. Another tool using that data is the project update bot. It's some secret, uh, super secret repository uh, hosted in Area 51. Um, uh, it uses issue templates from project analysis to post uh, uh, issues to the Drupal.org issue queue. And what it does, it analyzes the results, uh, checks if there's new patches through some uh, hash magic, and uh, posts those to Drupal.org. Currently, it runs on the machine of someone, Ted. Uh, so it's not perhaps the most scalable solution, but uh, it works, and it's uh, at least secure. Um, so that's about it for how things are going right now and what Project Update Bot is doing right now. Let's look ahead at Drupal 11. Uh, I think the main goal for Drupal 11 should be to create a maintainable pace towards that point. Um, if you look at how things went for, for Drupal 10, it was a pretty rough ride for the contrib maintainers, but also for the tooler, tooler maintainers. We started about six months before Drupal 10 was released. That meant that it was a pretty <laughs> high pressure cooker to get everything ready for Drupal 10 and to give uh, maintainers the time to get their modules ready and get the code in. Especially with the bigger modules, that's a lot of work and a lot of effort. Um, one of the things we also concluded is that uh, breaking backwards compatibility is a pretty bad idea. Um, the patches, getting patches in was a little bit harder because Suddenly you couldn't support 
Drupal 9 in some cases. So you had to maintain maybe two versions, but some people don't have the bandwidth to do that. And that's an issue you might need to solve. We did successfully decouple from the uh, Drupal Association Infra team, which is nice. Uh, before that change, it lived in the infrastructure rep repository. So getting things in is always a little bit of effort. And the guys in the infra team were pretty busy doing GitLab stuff and making sure that we eventually can actually upgrade Drupal.org because uh, uh, that's pretty, <laughs> well, that's a pretty important milestone. One of the things that's also, we should start doing is start earlier helping the maintainers. Make it baby steps towards the next major version of Drupal and not confront them with a big bulk of work like four months before the new version of Drupal is released. So if we go back to the, to the graph of how we did for Drupal 10 versus Drupal 9, you do see that Drupal 9, all the tooling was developed back then. So we started pretty late. If you look, here's the release date. And a little bit earlier, we started, uh, <coughs> we started posting patches. For Drupal 10, that was about six months ahead, which is way better, but still not perfect. So it would be really nice if we could start here. With Drupal 11 slotted right now for release in August, that means we have, uh, we have the summer to prepare for prepare to start with uh, posting patches and helping maintainers uh, get ready for Drupal 11. And that way make the transition a lot easier. In order to get there, there's a few things I think we should do. <clears throat> we start, should start fu fully utilizing GitLab. There's a lot of new possibilities in our migration to GitLab that weren't possible earlier on the old uh, Jenkins uh, uh, infrastructure. And it gives us a lot of power to do new exciting stuff. We need to get better in tracking deprecations and making sure that uh, the coverage of deprecations is solid. We don't forget anything. And uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, we have working patches for as many as we know. And we have a, perhaps a place to find what we don't cover. And lastly, we need to find a way to ensure backwards compatibility and make sure that modules are able to uh, support Drupal 10 and Drupal 11 alike in a single version. So if we have a look at utilizing GitLab, um, GitLab uses uh, GitLab templates to uh, do a lot of the hard work for module maintainers. So nowadays, it is as easy as including a gitlab.cie.yaml. That's a hard word. With only uh, include and a few lines, and you're connected to the testing pipeline on GitLab for Drupal. It would be pretty great if we could uh, move towards uh, a situation where you can also, for example, opt into regular updates from a project update box and run that on your own repository, which will make some things with access a lot of easier, for example, to create merge requests and stuff like that. And that's the second thing. Currently, the project update bot does post patches on issues in the issue queue. Um, we're slowly moving toward, slowly moving, we're moving towards uh, merge requests and uh, using GitLab fully for the whole new code into module flow, let's uh, say it like that. And that's something we should do also for the update bot. And there's some cool features in GitLab that might <coughs> make this a lot easier and make the update bot a lot more maintainable. For example, push options. It's possible to push and uh, set a git option and say, make a merge request for this, please. And it automates the whole merge request uh, creation for you. 
Another thing is GitLab issues. Uh, I've been, uh, <laughs> I've seen Drum say that GitLab issues is something that is coming soon, TM. <laughs> Uh, there's no definite date, but as soon as that is a thing, uh, this will also make a lot of things manageable perhaps in GitLab even more and create a, uh, an ecosystem that is manageable by the whole community instead of something that's hidden somewhere in a dark corner of the internet. This would also mean that perhaps the project update bot would move to GitLab or perhaps the whole function might be contained in something else and the name and the face might disappear and might be an integral part of the normal workflow of, uh, of Drupal. So fully utilizing GitLab has a lot of possibilities and a lot of things that, uh, that I'm quite excited about. Um, next up is the tracking of deprecations. If we look at how deprecations are how this works right now, it's a pretty human process. I mean, we first have to find the deprecations and we, can, we have a nice uh, 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 change record. We have change records we can look at and we can go through and find, hey, there's a new deprecation and this does X and it should do Y now. And that's great. But then we need to create relevant issues in the tooling around it. This could be up to five projects that might need some sort of update before we can support that deprecation in the automated pipeline. Then the different tools need to be updated and some independent on each other, so that's a little bit of a web sometimes to get that out and uh, about in the world. Uh, then we have to release the new versions and run project analysis and uh, make sure things work as intended. And lastly, we need to start up a laptop and get project up to, bit to update uh, all the issues with the new patches, with the new deprecation, uh, with the new situation. And then we wait a little bit and we have progress, yay! So in order to step, take a step forward in trapping that, tracking the deprecations, uh, Matt McLemon uh, decided to create a, a GitHub repository that automatically creates issues for deprecations on the change, uh, from the change record. It's an easier way to uh, start managing and start uh, uh, tagging what tooling needs updating and tracking the progress of that. Um, the end goal wouldn't be uh, uh, wouldn't be doing this uh, on GitHub, of course, but with the current movement where we might we were moving to GitLab issues, uh, we don't really want to automate against uh, Drupal.org issues. Uh, this was at least a step in the right direction to make it a little bit more manageable and to allow other people to also help in tagging and tracking those changes. So tracking deprecations is something that's important to, find, to work towards a way to know what deprecations are covered, to know, work towards a way to know what work we still have to do, and perhaps also for module maintainers to know, okay, there's still a set of deprecations I might need to look at manually because those might be there still. Um, Lastly, but not least important, is backwards compatible fixes. And that's a hard one. If we want to start supporting, helping people during the whole Drupal 10 life cycle towards Drupal 11, we do need backwards compatible fixes. These fixes would uh, uh, help maintainers keep the amount of work they need to do to fix deprecations small because this means you can just merge a new fix during Drupal 10 and have your module support either Drupal 10 or Drupal 11 without too much problem. Uh, this would also uh, be eventually mean that if we 
move more towards the Drupal 11 release, that upgrading will be a lot of lot easier. If we look at how 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 Core handles things uh, regarding uh, deprecations, a lot of the time where there's a new deprecation, the old code path is also supported, only with the deprecation warning, of course. So if there's some extra code uh, supporting both paths and make sure that nothing breaks up until the release of the next major. Then in the la latest uh, minor, so for example, in the Drupal 10 uh, lifecycle that was 9.5, there's a full feature freeze and 9.5, the last release of 9.5 is literally the same as Drupal 10, but including, yeah, I know. <laughs> the same as Drupal 10 for 97%, <laughs> let's say like that, um, but including the backward, so in Drupal 10, the deprecations are just removed. This means that the upgrade is relatively safe because there's no big new code, there's no extreme changes or extreme a new code path that haven't been tested or used before. And would would be really great if we can bring that stability and that, that path also to module maintainers without them having to fully grasp how to do that. So let's consider two modules. Huh? Let's uh, consider BadBot, which uh, uh, will support uh, Drupal 10 in uh, version 1.4 and version 11 in 1.5. And we have uh, the module GoodBot, which just supports Drupal 10 and 11 in the same version. How does this look when you upgrade your, uh, your, uh, your project? So um, by the time Drupal 11 releases, and you have modules that all follow the uh, pattern of bad bots, things can get a little bit complicated. So when you need to upgrade, uh, you require a new version of core with Composer because everyone uses Composer, otherwise you have that issue. And you need to upgrade core, but also a big set of modules in the same call. And I don't know how many people have seen this one. Ah, it conflicts, I don't know what to do. I'm truly conflicted on what I should do. We don't want that. So if all the modules would uh, follow the pattern of GodBot, you can just update your modules as you should do, do regularly anyhow. And by the time Drupal 11 releases, whole of Contrib, I'm very optimistic here, but I like to be optimistic, whole of Contrib is already ready for Drupal 11, all your modules. So the only thing you really need to upgrade in your upgrade to Drupal 11 would be core. And that's way, 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 way less risky than it is to update the whole stack. So in order to make sure we make Drupal 11 a lot easier, we do need patches that are backwards compatible. Uh, some Rector already has support for things like this. Uh, it could, you can um, uh, tell it for Symfony, for example, you can say, I say what versions of Symfony I want to, to support, and there's mm, some magic happening to make sure that is possible. But we also need that for Drupal to say, yeah, uh, I need to support Drupal 10 and 11 in the thing I'm running right now. Uh, uh, and the patches would reflect that. So this could result in perhaps uh, you, have, uh, you have two branches. You have the, your current uh, module version. You might have a uh, an, uh, next branch, let's uh, call it like that, which is your same module excluding deprecation, uh, just as core does. So there's still some work to be done to make this happen. Matt promised me He'll work on this on uh, this summer, so uh, 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 let's uh, give him, send him some flowers and <laughs> help him where possible to uh, make this happen. And I think that if we do these three things, fully utilize GitLab 
and make sure that everything we do for project offset board, for project analysis and tooling around that, make sure the community can help in maintaining and optimizing that. If we make sure that we are up to speed of all deprecations and make sure that uh, we know the holes we are digging for ourselves in the future, that would be great. Nothing is as bad as just walking and falling into a hole without you realizing the hole is there. Better stop over it. And lastly, backwards compatible fixes, which will really empower a lot of module developers to uh, do the thing that's, that's, that's great for all the site owners and to make all the site owners uh, fear the Drupal 11 upgrade even less than they might do right now. I did talk a little bit faster than I would planned. <laughs> That's how things went. If you want to help out, uh, just uh, join us in Slack in Drupal 10 readiness or Drupal 11 readiness. Come to Rector if you want to dive into complex code and you like a challenge. Uh, or come to PHP stand to help there. If you're the maintainer of modules and you don't have a Drupal 10 release for all your modules, uh, go get that ready. There should be patches. If not, we can help. And I want to highlight one uh, initiative um, uh, Kristen has, uh, has, has started recently, and it's a Drupal 10 project adoption. Um, what, you, what, uh, what they are doing right there is uh, they have a big uh, spreadsheet of modules that people want to use but don't have uh, Drupal 10 ready releases uh, with some instructions to how to adopt the module. A lot of those modules are really small, the patches are simple, but they just need someone to commit. And a lot of modules have perhaps fallen off the radar of the people built, who built it or they don't have any clients using it anymore, or perhaps they even left the Drupal space. And that's sad and not necessary. So uh, uh, if you have a doc and you can also adopt the module, uh, please uh, come say hi and uh, do a lot of work. It really helps. So I'd like to thank you everyone for your time. And uh, I'd like to answer any questions you might have had. Mike? Yeah. Yes. Back, uh, yeah. Uh, ben asks, uh, backwards compatible patches, that's uh, mostly uh, checking the Drupal version and using code path A or code path B to uh, do the work. Um, yeah, that's correct. That's mostly what, is what, uh, what, what the plan is. Sometimes it's not possible, though. There are some uh, changes that might have to do with uh, perhaps changes in Symfony or other upstream changes, which might affect some modules, but not all. <clears throat> so it's not going to be possible for every single change that uh, backwards for, to have backwards compatible patches. Um, we're talking also about uh, perhaps uh, getting some utility classes into core to help with uh, making it a little bit easier to choose code paths through code um, by using uh, an, uh, function references and uh, choosing it for you based on the version of Drupal core. So work's be do being done. The code itself is not going to be that hard, I think, but the support for that and making sure that the patch is generated for either backwards compatible or not backwards compatible, that's something that really needs some work and attention because we can't start posting broken patches because that's a bad idea. Any other questions? Yeah.
So the question is, um, are there any plans to, uh, uh, to publish a report or to make available a report of what the bot can and cannot do right now? Um, I think that it... Oh, yeah. So you talk about uh, the issue that the, bo the bot post is that we can see what it does and what does it doesn't do. I think making the process for the, for the tracking of the deprecations better enables us to report on that and report on uh, in what, at, at what time did we, uh, did we support what deprecation. For example, 10.1 is about to release. I'm not exactly sure when, but uh, we're on release candidate uh, X. <laughs> um, so we're close. And there's a pretty big set of deprecations already in, if I uh, 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 look through the change records. I think it's really important to report on what the bot does and does not do. Uh, there might have been quite a lot of maintainers that just merged the updated uh, bots patches somewhere in the beginning of the cycle and assumed, <laughs> I'm done. But that's, uh, uh, I think that if we go towards a model where we post more regularly or update more regularly, that it also helps to move away from that image or that assumption. But it's really important. Yeah, I agree. We need to have uh, a place to know what was supported at what time so you can know. Because we're not gonna, when 10.1 is re released, not everything is gonna be supported right away. That's pretty impossible. Then we have to work, integrate more into the release process. And that's something for perhaps Drupal 12 or 13. <laughs> yeah. So for the ones that update status time, they have an index of which ones are supported by us and then which ones are not. What, what's the policy with the bot? So it can tell you Yeah, but, yeah. If you look at the status dashboard, oh, yeah. What uh, Gabor says is that uh, uh, in the results for the analysis for upgrade status, there's always a list of things you might need to fix manually. Yeah. So uh, even if you look at the dashboard, there's a, there's a, there's an overview of all the issues that still need fixing manually. Um, so you can't see the state at that point or at the point right then or even use upgrade status in the, module, in the uh, project yourself to see what deprecations are still left. Um, but it still would be nice to know eh, how, is the work, how is the work being done on the deprecation going ahead? And is there, is there perhaps a reason that there's no support and will there never be support or will there be support uh, in uh, uh, soon? <laughs> and you'll just wait for the next minor release. So the question is, uh, so the question is, uh, can you run Rector on your own modules in your own website, if I uh, understand correctly? Um, when you use upgrade status, it uh, can do that, and you can look at your custom code and analyze what kind of deprecation you might use. So it's an invaluable tool to also help you upgrade your custom code to new uh, uh, to new versions to make sure you're uh, ready. For example, in our uh, CI pipeline for the, that we use for our projects, we actually, during our updates to even my, my new miners or, or new point releases, we always include an upgrade status report in the pull request we create for, for the code. So we have automated a lot of those things to know the state of the project at all times just look to the uh, upgrade history. So you can do that right now, yeah. Le uh, the question is, when is the time frame for the release for 11? The current goal is August next year. 
uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, the, with the standards, but it could also be December. Uh, but there's uh, some deadlines regarding um, uh, Symfony, I think, which uh, force us to move towards a more synchronized release schedule with Symfony to make our lives easier. And one of the steps you want to do is to move Drupal, up, Drupal 11 up a few months to eventually move to release cycle in July, I think. I say by heart, I'm not exactly sure. But we're moving up the release cycle to synchronize with Symfony and make our lives easier. If that's all. Oh, Ben. Um, technically, it would be possible, sure, but the rules will get, oh, okay, sorry. The question was, um, uh, a lot of the times right now with patches, uh, Rector uses uh, the global Drupal uh, static object to get services instead of using dependency injection, which you should use always. Um, uh, that's a bit of a shortcut, <laughs> let's call it that. And uh, the question was, does vector support uh, using dependency injection doing that? Or is it something that's, uh, that's uh, too hard? The fact is that the easy way to write uh, a move to work towards supporting new version is of course using uh, the service, uh, getting the services from the global object because you just need to change code in a single line. Uh, sometimes a class might not even use dependency injection right now, or there might be uh, other issues. Um, this will complicate the code for creating the patches. Technically, it's possible, but I think in order to do that, we need to get more power from the community, have a larger set of people creating those patches, creating those vector rules, because uh, creating those rules is effort, it's a lot of effort. There's a really relatively small set of people really maintaining those uh, rules and creating those rules. And uh, it's better to have a, a wide support of fixing deprecations than to have limited and deep support for fixing deprecations in a way that's really good. So that's something that uh, the community really can help if we get more people into uh, helping fixing deprecations in the future. If that's all questions, uh, I'd like to thank you all for being here uh, and your attention and uh, enjoy your DrupalCon. Thanks.